Hi everyone, this is Xiu Chen Huang. I'm a PhD student in CPAS of Virginia Tech. My research is about high frequency, high efficiency, high density power conversion. Today, I'm going to show you a high density 65 watt adapter using gallium nitride devices. As we know, the market for low power adapter is huge. This diagram shows the market information of these years of the low power adapters for the notebook. We can see that the adapter below 65 watt occupies about 80% of the total volume. And another growing market for the low power adapter is the tablet or 2-in-1 tablet. The volume is about 250 million pieces per year. The power level is about 10 to 30 watts. The market for the low power adapter is huge and the continue growing. And this attracts more research to develop high density adapter since customer always desire smaller and lighter one. Let's take a look at of the state of art adapter. One is from Delta and the other is from Powerland. They all use flyback topology due to simplicity and the low cost. The flyback is designed to operate at critical mode to improve efficiency. However, the switching frequency is below 250 kHz using slick MOSFET to maintain high efficiency. Therefore, the passive components including the transformer, output filter, EMI filter is large and light at low frequency. The power density is around 11 to 13 watt per cubic inch. The emerging gallium nitride devices offer the opportunity to push to high frequency to increase power density without sacrifice efficiency. The table shows the key parameters of a comparable gain switch and the silicon MOSFET. The gain device has much smaller gate charge and junction capacitance, which basically means the smaller switching related loss. The switching energy curve shows the superior of gain switch. The turn-on loss is much smaller and moreover, the turn-off loss is negligible compared to the silicon MOSFET. The loss breakdown of 65 watt adapter shows that even the frequency for gain switches are 10 times higher than silicon MOSFET, the device related loss is very similar. Therefore, we can push frequency to MHz range and try to reduce the passive component size. But as you know, the MacHertz system design has a lot of system challenge. First is the high frequency transformer design with right material, proper winding structure, and the embedded shielding layer which tackles with the common noise issue. The second is the high frequency SR driving method with the noise immunity and the accurate time sequence. The commercial IC won't do the favor for MacHertz range. The third is the EMI filter design, including the high frequency parasitic impact. The last but not the least, the zero voltage switching should be guaranteed to minimize the switching loss. We have a preliminary hardware design as shown here. The power stage is as a daughter board mounted on the motherboard for test convenience. And uh, this is the 600 volt gain device from Transform as the primary size switch. And this is small piece uh, from EPC, which is the synchronous rectifier on the secondary side, and this is the PCB winded transformer. The size of about the power stage is about 45 mm in square and 10 mm in thickness. The calculated power density with reasonable case is about 28 watt per cubic inch. We applied the active clamp circuit to suppress the voltage spike on the primary side and also recycle the leakage energy as well as achieve the zero voltage switching for the main switch. The peak efficiency is about 95.3% at 700 kHz without diode bridge and EMI filter. The efficiency at 1 MHz is below 93 due to the larger winding loss in this particular design. There is still a lot of work to be done including the closed loop design and transformer optimization as well as the high frequency EMI filter design. Hopefully, we can come out with a good system design this year and share with you. This is the key waveform at low line input and the full load output condition. The pink curve is the SR drain source voltage. The blue curve is the primary switch drain source voltage. And the yellow one is the gate signal of the primary switch. We can clearly see that the primary switch can achieve zero voltage switching. And due to the active clamp characteristic, during the turn off transition, and there is no oscillation and this also helps the EMI issue. That's all for my video. Thank you for your time and hope you enjoy the information. See you!